Hello everybody and welcome to the Next Generation Pharmacology series where I go over practice questions to help you prepare for the NCLEX. And this series or, or this session will be on cardiac, cardiac medications. So here's the medication table that you would see on a question um, and there are certain blanks and they will give you options to fill in the blanks. So we'll just go through this table and you'll get the opportunity to answer the questions. Uh, one thing to note is that the drug class can refer to the pharmacology class or the therapeutic class. For example, with metoprolol, the therapeutic class is antianguinal or antihypertensive and the pharmacology class is a beta blocker. Alrighty, so the first medication here, atorvastatin. The dose route frequency is 20 milligrams oral once a day. The drug class is HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. And we are selecting what is indicated for. So I'll give you guys about 10 seconds to answer. If you would like more time, please pause the video. So the answer is management of hyperlipidemia. So atorvastatin um, helps to prevent the synthesis of cholesterol, um, thus um, treating high, high fat or high lipid levels in the blood. Alrighty, carvitolol. Um, it is given 12.5 milligrams oral twice a day. It is indicated for the management of hypertension and heart failure. So now we're selecting the drug class. Please pause the video if you'd like more time. Alrighty, a beta adrenergic blocker. So carvitolol, the, the beta blocker medications, uh, first I'll talk about, they will end in OL. So that is a good way to, um, you really want to know that those medications, those beta blocker medications, end in that, in OL. So metoprolol, esmolol, carvitolol are all beta blockers. So beta blockers, these medications affect the beta 1 and beta 2 adrenergic receptors. Um, thus decreasing heart rate and blood pressure and helping to improve cardiac output. And they're typically indicated for the management of hypertension and heart failure. Alrighty, the third medication, digoxin, is 0.125 milligrams oral once a day. It is a cardiac glycoside and we'll um, select what it's indicated for. pause the video if you'd like more time. Alrighty, so digoxin increases the myocardial contractile force. So digoxin is a unique medication because it increases the force of contraction while also decreasing the heart rate. So for someone who's got a fast heart rate but um, also needs that help to increase blood pressure, this is a good medication for that. Fourth medication here, uh, so we'll be selecting it. We know that it is given about 2.5 milligrams oral once a day. It is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, otherwise known as an ACE inhibitor, and is indicated for the management of heart failure. Please pause the video if you'd like more time. Alrighty, lisinopril. So another thing to know, we talked about how beta blockers end in OL, um, ACE inhibitors end in PRIL. So lisinopril, that PRIL ending um, tells you that it is an ACE inhibitor. One thing about ACE inhibitors here, so for example, lisinopril blocks the conversion of angiotensin 1 from angiotensin 2 in the RAS system, resulting in that systemic vasodilation. Alrighty, the fifth medication here, warfarin. Um, the dose is 2.5 milligrams oral once a day. We will be selecting the drug class and it is indicated for atrial fibrillation. Please 
pause the video if you'd like more time. So warfarin's an anticoagulant. So warfarin interferes with the synthesis of vitamin K in the liver and then helps and helps to prevent the venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and thrombosis um, from atrial fibrillation. So it's really helping to prevent those clots. That's why it's indicated for atrial fibrillation. People with atrial fibrillation are at higher risk of clots developing so heart's not pumping as effectively and blood can kind of become stagnant in the heart um, and make them at risk for forming clots and throwing clots to their brain or their um, lungs. Alrighty, so our medication highlights here. So atorvastatin, it is a HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, and it inhibits cholesterol synthesis. One severe side effect is rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis is where, so rhabdo, um, so it's like the breakdown of the muscle, myo, or lysis, break, breakdown of the muscle. So um, rhabdomyolysis is where a severe skeletal muscle breaks down, and that muscle releases um, toxins to the body and these can be damaging to our organs especially our kidneys so it's um, definitely something that want you want to recognize right away so always instruct patients to notify their health care provider if they um, experience muscle tenderness alrighty carvitolol that beta blocker ending in ol beta adrenergic blocker it affects the beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic receptors, thus decreases heart rate and blood pressure and helps to improve cardiac output. One potential common side effect is hyperglycemia and dizziness fatigue. And then a severe side effect is bradycardia and Steven Johnson syndrome. So monitor, um, instruct patients to monitor their blood pressure throughout the therapy and heart rate, just make sure it's not getting too low. Also monitor their weight daily as um, they're like uh, taking this likely or can be taking this for heart failure things like that. So monitoring their weight daily is important as well. Alrighty, digoxin is a cardiac glycoside, so it increases the myocardial contractile force and decreases heart rate. Um, one potential common side effect is bradycardia, and a severe side effect is arrhythmias. So if you are um, a couple things to note about administering this medication, uh, always take the apical pulse so you are listening to their heart rate and counting their pulse um, prior to administering. Hold if you get a pulse less than 60. And then when administering this medication IV, administer very slowly over 5 minutes. And then for patients who are on this medication long term, they'll have their digoxin levels checked just to make sure that they're within that therapeutic range, and it's pretty narrow, of 0.8 to 2.0. Alrighty, lisinopril, that ACE inhibitor ending in pril, so it's an angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor, otherwise known as ACE inhibitor. It results in systemic vasodilation by blocking the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. A potential common side effect is hypotension. Um, one severe side effect of ACE inhibitors specifically, really good to know, is angioedema. And angioedema is the allergic reaction where patients get swelling around their lips, mouth, throat, and it can cause you know, anaphylaxis as well. Um, one thing to note about lisinopril and ACE inhibitors in general is ha uh, make sure to instruct patients to notify their health care provider if they develop a dry cough. So lisinopril increases bradykinin and bradykinin can cause a dry cough in some people it's like a cough irritator um, so just notify patients and if they do develop a cough they'll likely be switched to another um, blood pressure medication that does not cause that side effect for them the warfarin is a anticoagulant it helps prevent thrombus formation and embolization by like thinning the blood um, a severe side effect is bleeding so bleeding gums, tarry stools, hematuria, if your patient develops any of these, um, definitely notify the healthcare provider. And then educate the patient that they will have frequent testing of their PT and INR to assess the effectiveness of the medication, um, make sure they're in the right level, they have the right dosage for them. Alrighty, so here's the medication table. Um, so we went over 
a couple good cardiac medications. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.